Hi Motherifics, it's me again, Princess Joy Bugambal. In this video, I'll be discussing rational functions. But since a rational function is a broad topic, I divided the video and this will be the third part. But again, before you start, please watch my other videos about tackling and simplifying polynomials, since those videos will be a big help in understanding my lesson for today. So again, this is Princess Joy Bugambal, and I will be guiding you all throughout the course in general mathematics. If you have any problems, questions, or clarifications, please do leave a comment and I'll be glad to assist you. So mga kamatrifics, let's start! So let's define first what is rational function. A rational function is a function in the form r of x, is equal to p of x all over q of x, where q of x is not equal to 0. p of x and q of x are both polynomials. Rational functions are fraction where its denominator must not be equal to 0. Fractions with denominator of 0 are called indeterminate or undefined. That's why in rational function, q of x should not be equal to 0. In this case, we have to identify the restrictions in rational function. So before we proceed, let's have this restrictions of domain. When we say restrictions of domain or extraneous roots, these are real numbers which the function is not defined. The domain of a rational function is determined in terms of restrictions. Now, as you can see, the word domain was mentioned in our definition. So, let's go back from our previous lesson and let's define what is domain. The first value or the element of an ordered pair is what we call as the domain which represents all the components of x. So meaning to say, the restrictions of domain that we are talking about in this slide are the values of x. What are the values of x wherein the rational function will be undefined? Now for the second value or the element of the ordered pair, this is what we call as the range, which represents all the components of y. Now, how do we uh, identify the restrictions of domain? Let's use these four examples. Okay, so now let's try out these four examples in identifying the restrictions. Take note that if you are able to identify the restrictions or the extraneous roots, therefore, you can also identify the values of domain. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so let's identify the restrictions of this function. r of x is equal to x minus 3 all over x minus 4. But before we start, there are some points that you must remember okay, before proceeding in getting the, the restrictions. Always remember that r of x, or rational function, is in the form of fractions. Therefore, rational function should not be undefined. Now, functions is undefined or undefined if its denominator is zero. That's why in our definition from the last slide, r of x is equal to p of x all over q of x, wherein p of x and q of x are both polynomials, and q of x should not be equal to zero. If our denominator is equal to zero, therefore, that is the restriction. So in this case, our restrictions or the extraneous roots can be found in our denominator. So in short, what we are looking for are the values of x where the function will not be undefined. So let's have this one, r of x is equal to x minus 3 all over x minus 4. So again, for us to identify the restrictions or the extraneous roots, we have to take out the denominator x minus 4. So we have x minus 4. 
then apply or equate it to zero. This process is what we call zero product property. And we only use this for us to identify the restri restrictions or the extraneous rules. Now solve for x. So um, we have APE or addition property of equality or we can apply transposition or transpose as our shortcut. So, um, most of you um, are familiar with transpose. Though transpose is not the real process, the real process is APE or addition property of equality. So for us to be quick, let's use the shortcut in transpose. So transpose this one on the other side. So we have x is equal to negative 4. Uh, transfer it on the other side. So instead of negative, it will become positive. So the value of x is equal to 4. Okay. So x is equal to 4 is the restriction or the extraneous root. Okay. So that means our domain, uh, by the way, domain is the first uh, value of an ordered pair or the x. Our restriction for this function is equal to 4. Meaning to say, our x are all real numbers, real numbers positive or negative, except 4. We cannot use 4. Why? Because if we use the value 4 in our function, the function will be undefined. Let's try. R of x is equal to x minus 3 all over x minus 4, where in the values, value of x that we are, you, uh, we are going to use is 4. So substitute 4 minus 3 all over 4 minus 4. So this is positive 1 over 0. Our denominator here clearly is 0. That's why this is undefined. Meaning to say, the value of x, which is 4, must not be used. Okay? So again, our value of domain are all real numbers except 4. So meaning to say, I can use positive 3, positive 5, positive, positive 6, 7, so on and so forth. I can also use negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, 5. All these numbers, when you substitute that in uh, as the value of x, the function will not be undefined. Okay, so our domain of x, again, x are only numbers except 4. We can also uh, rewrite this as set builder notation, x, x, or domain, such that uh, x are all set of real numbers except positive 4. So that's it. Okay, so let's try this one, second example. Let's try a um, more complex example. Let's identify the restriction. Again, our restriction can be found in our denominator. So let's uh, take out the denominator first. We have x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, from my previous uh, videos, I told, I told you that if you encounter a trinomial, the first thing that you should do is to factor it out. Now, in this case, for identifying the restrictions, you have to do the same. So, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is factorable. So, let's identify the factors. Factors of 6 can use 2 and 3. Now, we are looking for positive 6 and negative 5 in the middle term. So, I guess uh, the factors are x minus 3 and x minus 2. Let's check. Negative 3 times negative 2, that is positive 6. That is correct. Negative 3 plus negative 2, they are like signs. So add 3 plus 2, that is 5. Copy the common sign, negative. So our factors are correct. Now, um, let's proceed with the restrictions. So our denominators, a denominator is x minus 3 and x minus 2. Apply zero product property. Let's equate this to with 0. So, x minus 3 is equal to 0. Same on the other side, x minus, minus 2 is equal to 0. I don't know if you could still remember, but um, this, pro this process was 
uh, discussed by your math teacher. I think uh, grade 8 math and grade 9 mathematics. Okay, so let's proceed. Find the values of x or the extraneous roots. We have x, negative 3 transpose, so we have positive 3. On the other side, we have positive 2. So, so the extraneous roots or the restrictions are positive 3 and positive 2. Meaning to say, the domain or the values of x are all real numbers except Except positive 3 and positive 2. On a set builder notation, x are all set of a set of real numbers such that x should not be equal to positive 3 and positive 2. Again, these are the restrictions. Therefore, these are the values of x that we cannot use because our denominator or our uh, rational function will be undefined. Let's try the third example. Restrictions comes from our denominator, x squared minus x minus 2. Now get the factor since this is a tri trinomial which is factorable. Factors of negative 2, we have 2 and positive 1. So how about the sign? I can see here a negative sign. So this is negative and this is positive. Let's check if my factors are correct. Multiply 1 positive 1 times negative 2, that is negative 2. Add positive 1 plus negative 2, unlike signs, so minus. You only have 1. Then copy the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So negative 1x. So that means our factors are correct. Now identify the restrictions or the extraneous roots. Equate this 2 uh, with, with 0. So we have x plus 1 is equal to 0. We have x is equal to negative 1. On the other side, we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, our x is equal to positive 2. Meaning to say, our values of x are all reals except negative 1 and positive 2. Therefore, or in short, we can use uh, all numbers, positive or negative, except for this two. Okay, next for the last example, our rational function, uh, this should be r, is equal to x plus 3 all over x squared minus 6x minus 9. Okay, so again, we are looking for the restrictions under our denominator so we have x squared minus 6 x minus 9 again get the factors so I guess this is 3 these are both negative let's check negative 3 times negative 3 that is positive 9 then add that is negative 6 so our factors are correct so, get the, the extraneous roots. We have x minus 3 is equal to 0. But as you can see, there are both negative. I mean, x minus 3. So, can do it as 1. So, this is positive 3. Meaning to say, the extraneous root or the restriction is positive 3. x, the values of x are all real numbers except positive 3. So we have our x are all set of real numbers such that x is not equal to positive 3. That's it. Please stay tuned for the continuation of this video.